Hey true believers, this is Dr. T and welcome to my comic book channel. Is the Overstreet comic book price guide still relevant today? Stay tuned. Please consider supporting this channel by smashing that like button and subscribing. And if you're really enjoying today's content, press that notification bell. So I have made a list of 18 reasons why I believe the Overstreet Guide is in fact relevant today. And I'm going to be using the 50th anniversary edition. I haven't yet picked up the 51st edition. So whenever I give, if I give a page number or anything like that, it's going to be within this copy. Number one, I personally love the ads inside from the major comic book dealers and buyers in the United States, as well as the major auction houses. Number two, many of the movers and shakers of the comic book buying and selling industry function as overstreet advisors. Their participation lends us to think that the price guide is still relevant. Number three, prices found in the guide are provided through research and experience from established dealers, collectors, and comic book historians, and that gives me a lot of comfort knowing that these experts, people that love the hobby, are influencing the direction that the price guide takes in terms of giving us accurate and, and well-researched information. Number four, on page 82 of the 50th, 50th guide, it says, no matter how much you know about comics, there's always more to learn. The guide provides this opportunity to learn more because of all of the different types of content it has, not just assessing and guiding us in the value of comic books. Number five, on page 84 it reads, Overstreet pricing and grading standards are the accepted foundation of the comic book marketplace. These words are widely accepted in the comic book community and again because of the the array of Overstreet advisors and people like me and many like you that use the guide it solidifies this statement from directly from the guide. Number 6. The guide is for the collector. The guide advises collect what you love and you'll never be disappointed. Number 7. A list of the Overstreet Hall of Fame, starting with the inaugural year in 2006. Number eight, new Hall of Fame inductees. And in the 50th edition, this is on pages 56 through 61. And for this year, it was Kevin Eastman, Luis Simonson, and the penciler inker Dick Spring. Number nine, in memoriam articles of recently passed titans of the industry. Number 10. Apart from pricing comics, the guide is a great resource for comic knowledge. The guide doesn't focus on only one genre or even a handful of genres, but every conceivable comic book genre from the pioneer, Victorian, and Platin Age to modern books. Number 11. The guide is quick to divulge that it's also important to remember that this book is a guide, not a dealer's price list. The market sets the prices. And I love that they are transparent with that fact. I've heard that from comic book sellers at conventions and in LCSs, but I like that the guide itself states that. They are not trying to dictate to us what this book is in fact worth right now. It's the market that does that, but the guide is just going to do, do that, guide us towards a, a, a price for a book. And not all books are, are going to work, especially in today's market, obviously. Number 12, it is highly enjoyable to turn the paper in your hand versus doing everything dig digitally. It's very satisfying to have this huge book and flip the pages and enjoy looking through all the different prices, the different articles that the guide has to offer. Number 13, one of my favorite features of the guide are the article-like market reports from Overstreet Advisors on the state of the comic book industry. And in the 50th edition, there are 80 pages worth 
of those market reports. It's just really fun to read what they have to say and these sellers, buyers, and historians take on what is happening currently in the comic book market in article form, essentially. Number 14, brief definitions of each grade are provided. And these definitions are very brief, but still very useful. Number 15, there are great articles and interviews. Some examples are The Batman Gothic Genesis by Rob Hughes. This is found on page 342 to 351. And a great interview with CBCS's Scott Borak. Number 16, there is a comprehensive glossary of terms at the end of the guide. And as comic book collectors, it's very useful to make sure that we're familiar with these terms so that when we're talking to fellow, fellow sellers, buyers, uh, comic book enthusiasts, that we're all on the same page with this comic book vernacular that we have to make it as enjoyable and as easy to understand one another as possible. Number 17, there is an entire list of the 170 Overstreet Advisors at the end of the guide on page 1169 through 1173. Number 18. There are 1,184 pages of comic book goodness. There were only a couple of cons, in my opinion, that I, that I wanted to share. And again, they are just that, my opinion. There could be less there could be none there could be more but here are here are some of those i would like to see them add a 9.4 near mint price though with golden age books and many silver age books this would not be necessary the guy does say uh, in an in an attempt to clarify this prices above 9.2 are frequently considered extremely volatile and that is why they don't go higher than 9.2 near mint minus in the guide. But it would be nice to see them just have 9.4, at least for, for certain books that they didn't feel were too, were too volatile in their pricing. And then the second thing, with the rate of price acceleration in the comic book market, a printed guide has a difficult time keeping up. I'm sure many of you have experienced that flipping through the guide and, and seeing there's no way that those are even near the current prices. Uh, especially 2020 into 2021, has shown that it might be time for a digital version of the price guide that could be updated at least quarterly. I know there's a lot of time, money, and effort that goes into doing that, but there is such a huge in interest right now in comic books by so many new collectors that I think it could be possible. Yes, the price guide is a guide, but it would be great if it could reflect the more current prices. With that being said, there are really countless back issues that do not move much in price and the price guide still accurately reflects their value. Not long ago, I was at an LCS and I saw the owner pricing comics from the guide and I'm sure that's a very common, common practice amongst um, LCSs. Currently on Amazon, you can pre-order a copy of the guide for $26 a pretty good price considering it has so much content over almost 1,200 pages. The cover price is $30. Now, don't let my biases be your biases, but clearly I am a fan of the price guide, and perhaps this video might convince you to go out and get a copy of your own if you haven't done so. And true believers, remember, comics for life. <laughs>